feeling of the interview was they didn't want people who fitted into a box. They wanted people who had uh, unusual dynamism for this role because this role was an unusual role. Unwittingly, we were the part of the breakdown of a very well-ordered, unionised, structured way of producing television. Julian said to me, how do we decide who can do this or can't do it? And I thought, I'm not really interested in people with prior BBC, I don't want them. But I said, I want people. So I said, Julian, let's, let's just open up a room somewhere and we'll buy a lot of cheap, like, little camera, home video cameras. And we'll, I don't know if you remember this, we gave everybody the video camera. We said, go, go somewhere and tell a story with the camera. That's all I want you to do. No instruction whatsoever. And some people came back with, you know, you can see they're fascinating. They went into places and they shot stuff like this. Other people did it. Some people did stand-ups. They were out immediately. <laughs> they didn't want them at all. But the ones who brought back the most interesting raw video, and we said, don't shoot more than five minutes, um, the ones who were the most aggressive, who were the most creative with the camera, that's who we hired. When the advertisement for video journalist appears, 3,000 young hopefuls apply. 30 are chosen. They come from different backgrounds, researchers, newspapers, magazines, secretaries. And for organisations like the BBC who struggle with diversity, it was an object lesson in a, a room on the first day that had black, white, men, women, young, old, people of faith and people not uh, of faith. Video journalism was sold to me as a way of being a one-man band, multi-skilled, so you actually came up with the story, you go and film the story, you come back and you put the story together and it goes on air. Um, and that was how we started doing it, but I think now it's, it's kind of changed and transformed, so people now when they think of video journalism, they tend to think more of a, a person who is more perhaps technical than ta uh, the creative and they will go and do the story but they won't necessarily do it all the way from start to finish. You'd come out, you would do a story, you'd quite often do two a day and sometimes three and I think the most I ever did was four and that's like minimum 90 second packages, yeah. The purpose of video, video journalism in my humble opinion is, is the simple poem that I once heard Muhammad Ali say me, we. What's my story and how it, how relevant is it to you? Like Channel One made my career such as it is. I was one of the youngest people there, one of the least experienced. Uh, there was a, a t there was a, a, a sprinkling of weird dust if you'd been at, on you if you'd been at Channel One, which was people were both suspicious of you and thought that you could do something that no one else could do or very few people could do and thought you had this kind of uh, mastery of the dark arts of television on the cheap which was what everyone was desperately trying to do as we as it happened at the kind of the dawn of a multi-channel era it was incredibly hard work it was incredibly inspiring uh, and what it left me with was a sense that things do not have to be as the orthodoxy dictates uh, hi, I'm Steve Punter. Uh, I think I can claim to be a VJ Emeritus. Uh, along with uh, David, I was one of the 30 people, odd people, very odd people, recruited to be VJs for Channel One. Uh, we were brilliant for about 18 months in the middle. The first three months we were terrible. The last three months we were awful. But for about 18 months I think we were probably unbeatable. And uh, we were going to change the world. Well, almost two decades on. Here we are. Uh, I'm not a cynic though, I'm a radical. Uh, I think we're just about to enter uh, a golden age uh, of new media, whether it's television, I doubt very much. I think it'll be mobile, I think it'll be on the web, I think it'll be pro-am, uh, and I think it'll be completely destructive of ownership uh, structures and the existing culture, and I can't wait. It was more than great fun, although it was great fun. 
Uh, but the quality of the programming was was terrific. Uh, I mean, it was good quality news, good quality uh, programming, uh, at a time when people in mainstream television thought that you couldn't make any program uh, uh, for less than fifty or a hundred thousand pounds an hour. We were making programming genuinely for two or three thousand pounds an hour, and it was the model for a lot of what followed, particularly on observational series. Well, re when really all you need is the person, the camera, and being in the right place. And that doesn't cost a lot, a lot of money. And plenty of other production companies now have made a reasonable business out, out of that. So we were, in many ways, pioneer, pioneers of, um, uh, of low-cost, low high-quality programming.